Hi, this is Kevin, and today I want to talk about preferences. Preferences in brackets is something that has uh, been on my mind for a while. In fact, I wrote this page on the wiki six months ago because it bothered me so much where things stood. And um, we also had a research story that Brian Chin led, uh, which led to this, this uh, result here. During the last two days, uh, innovation days, I went ahead and implemented uh, a new preferences system. So I want to show that today. And I'll show off some of the problems here. So let's say I'm starting a new project. Um, now, this is the thing about a code editor and preferences is that people have different needs, genuinely different needs uh, for different projects and between different users. So it's important to have a preference system that actually supports what people need to do. Um, so in this case, uh, you can see that I've got um, four spaces for indentation. Now, that's not maybe not what I use. Maybe my standard here for HTML is that I want to use uh, two spaces. So I can make a brackets.settings.json file at the root of my project. And by doing that, I can now set some settings. So I can set space units to two. So now this, of course, is not a, um, a great UI, but it's at least functional. It's something I can check into my version control system um, and the important thing is that it's a model. It's a starting point for what we could eventually build UI-wise. So you see I saved the, the preferences file, and now it says spaces two. So if I go back to my HTML and I start editing, um, I now have uh, two-space indentation, which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, now if I go to edit this file, you can see this is now switched to two-space indentation here. Maybe I don't use two-space indentation everywhere. Maybe I only use it for HTML. So uh, this system supports what, what I call layers. Um, and the only layer right now is the language layer. Uh, actually, here, let me let me go ahead and save this so it sets my space units back. Um, so I'm going to use the language layer here. Uh, and I'm going to say language HTML space units 2. OK, now by saving that, you can see my space units here in my JSON file is still 4. If I switch to the HTML file, it is now 2, uh, which is great. Um, now, something else that has been kind of annoyance uh, is that when you create an untitled file, it's just text. Uh, however, what if I know that this project is going to be largely JavaScript? So I can say that the default extension is going to be JavaScript. This is a new prep that I just created. So now I hit a new file, and you can see it's a JavaScript file. It's running like a JavaScript file, and I didn't have to do any extra work. Uh, now another example of something that has bothered me preferences-wise, let's say i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. Um, so uh, yeah, this is kind of the nice intro program that everybody uses. All right, and now demo.js is what I'll save this as. Uh, okay, so immediately I got JS lint errors. Um, now this, of course, is kind of annoying, uh, and we get a lot of complaints about this. Um, so of course I can set these. Uh, basically, I just say plus plus is true, and devel is true, and now I save. Okay, and the errors have gone because I've told JS lint this is how uh, I'm going to set up my files. But you know what? I have to put this on every single file. <clears throat> every single JavaScript file I make, and that seems awfully annoying too. So what if there was a setting like JSLint options, and I set plus, plus, plus to true, and devel also to true. Save that, switch back here, and now I can delete this line, hit save, and no errors because the JS Lint is now running with the settings that are appropriate for my project, uh, which means that in the brackets project, we can set up a set of settings that, that are common across all our files. Um, and the great thing is that doesn't have to be the same settings as everyone else. And the last thing I'll point out is that uh, there is a uh, user settings file. So this is in the, the brackets app data folder. Um, if I open this file up, uh, you can see right now it just says space units four. But basically, this replaces local storage for the purposes of um, of, of st storing user settings, which means that 
somebody could just go in here and edit this file. They can add whatever preference they want. Um, it doesn't have to have UI at this point, um, but they can set this at the user level. And so basically there's defaults and then there's the user level, um, which is the next level up. And then uh, there's the project level. Uh, and the intention also is that there'd be one more level, uh, which is basically files. Um, there can also be an in-memory level. Um, that's not important though. The important thing is that we have a multi-layered preference system um, where the preferences merge together in a predictable manner. So that's, that's it. Uh, there's still a couple days work to do on this, um, but generally speaking, it's, it's looking pretty good and working pretty well. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. I look forward to your feedback. Thanks.